This popped up in my feed because the algorithms know I'm into PC hardware, so these types of things pop up in my feed, and this one is triggering me, but it's also a learning opportunity, so let's talk. Because not only is this question containing a lot of things that I'll call uh, uh, learning opportunities, and even the comments I, I'm not super impressed with. Oftentimes I think you get really good feel, feedback on our build a PC. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and talk. So this says, good idea buying high-end CPU and have the GPU as the bottleneck. And I will say that there's uh, more going on in this post, but I will say, is it better to have the GPU as the bottleneck? Yes, that is better because then you're getting the full usage of your GPU. And in general, you can adjust the GPU bottleneck, meaning what frame rate it's able to reach at maximum usage by controlling the graphics settings and rendering resolutions through things like DLSS, that kind of thing, uh, which are much easier to adjust. Whereas when a CPU is the frame rate limit, there's generally very few, if any, graphic settings that you can change to adjust it. Meaning your CPU generally does just put a hard ceiling on the maximum frame rate you can reach at any given time in any given game. Now, in any given game, depending on what scene, what the scene is, whether you're in like a big city environment with lots of NPCs or a multiplayer game with tons of people all in the same space versus in a more empty environment, et cetera, that, that upper limit can change. So I can't just say this CPU can give you this many FPS in this game. It's more complicated than that. But at any given time, the CPU does hit a hard limit where as you adjust the graphic settings in the game, it can relieve the burden on the GPU and your frame rate can increase. But no matter how much you relieve the burden on the GPU, you'll hit a hard limit at your CPU's maximum frame rate it can reach in that scene. Okay, that's kind of how to think about whether your GPU or CPU bottlenecked and how they play together. But, uh, so, so while I agree it is better to be GPU limited than CPU limited and you want your CPU to have enough headroom to reach the kind of frame rates you want, now I'm starting to get triggered when we read the rest of this. Right now I'm in my planning phase for my first PC build, and I already bought a 5060 Ti. Stop right here, you've already made a huge mistake. If you are in the planning phase for your build, you should not have bought any of the parts yet, okay? And this is a common mistake I see people make. They want to build a PC, so they start researching parts, finding things in their budget, and buying it as soon as they can afford it. The problem is, this then drags out the build over a long period of time. Notice they mention here that the build will probably be towards the end of the year. Okay, so it'll probably be a build towards the end of the year, um, but they've already started buying components. This doesn't really line up. Now I get that they said they have a 2060, it's not really cutting it anymore, but I still generally don't recommend stringing the buying of, of parts out over a long period of time. And here's why. It's because now you end up in awkward situations like this. So they've already bought a 5060 Ti, and now I'm wondering, should I buy a high-end CPU, like an i9-14900KF or the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, so I can use the PC for the next five to six years and maybe only having to upgrade the GPU? I'll talk about that long-term planning in a minute, but let's just look at the immediate question at hand. Should we pair a 5060 Ti with an insanely high-end CPU like a 9800X3D or 14900KF? That is just not a question we should be addressing. Like the answer to that question is, if you want that high, that, that, that this high end of a CPU does not make sense to pair with the 5060 Ti. The problem is the 5060 Ti has now already been purchased, which now limits how we can deal with this situation, okay? So here's what I mean. It's better to plan your entire build around a certain budget so you can understand how these things affect each other. Because when you spend more money on one part, it means that you have less money to spend on another part. And that's the biggest thing I see people missing when they first get into planning PCs. When you, if you spend more money on one part, there is less money available to spend on the other part. That's how this works. It, it's like a, it, there's a fixed sum. So let's focus on the CPU and the GPU because these are the most important parts of the build. Now, 
This uh, person has already purchased a 5060 Ti. They didn't state whether it was the 16 gigabyte or the eight gigabyte version, but I'll tell you right now, if, uh, if you're gonna buy a 5060 Ti, make it the 16 gigabyte version. So I'm gonna go ahead and slot that, that in here. Right now, it looks like the lowest price is $469, okay? Um, I don't think my fat head needs to be this big right now. Ah, I'm tiny. Okay, all right, so $469 has already been spent on the GPU. We're now wondering, should we pair this with a 9800X3D? Now, uh, the lowest price on the 9800X3D, uh, make sure it's the Ryzen and not some old 9800E, uh, um, is $489. So that means that if we pair these together, we are just under $1,000 for the uh, GPU and CPU pairing. And the important concept here for planning your PC builds is that what we should think is, I have a $1,000 budget for my GPU and CPU pairing. What is the best way to distribute that money to maximize my gaming performance? And then we'll also talk about that idea of planning for the future, long-term planning, right? Because uh, future-proofing is a difficult concept in PCs and can often be a trap. Anyway. Uh, so let's think about this. I have about $1,000 to spend. So now let's imagine we hadn't already bought the 5060 Ti because my biggest advice would be if you have a $1,000 budget for your GPU and CPU, buy a better GPU than the 5060 Ti. Not because the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte isn't a perfectly reasonable GPU, but if you have a $1,000 budget for the pair, devote more of it to the GPU. Here's what I mean. Uh, let's go ahead and look at a relative performance chart here at Tech Power Up. Um, this is not perfect all the time and it doesn't apply to every single game, but the general idea is it gives you a ballpark figure of how to rank the relative performance of GPUs. It's not gonna factor in VRAM here super well or whether you're ray tracing or not, but just gives you a rough idea how they stack up. I bet we could stay around this same budget with a different CPU and get a GPU that is much more powerful. Notice if I set the 5060Ti 16 gigabyte as the 100% baseline, we can now scroll down and look at GPUs that are more powerful. For example, a 5070 is generally about 40% more powerful according to this chart. Again, other charts might have it at 30% more powerful. It depends on what tests you run, all of that. But this is a ballpark figure saying that a 5070 would be noticeably faster. Or if we could get to something like a 9070, if we were considering AMD options, that's about 55% faster. Uh, the 5070 Ti would be 81% uh, faster. That's almost twice the performance. The 9070 XT is right around there, 73% faster. So if we could fit GPUs like these into the budget, then we're now almost doubling the gaming performance unless we run into a CPU limit. And that's what he was kind of thinking about. I want to make sure I'm GPU limited, I'm not being limited by my CPU, that kind of idea, right? So here's the thing. Basically, one way you can think about this is if you, if you buy a more powerful GPU, you will get this much more performance unless your CPU smashes a, a, a fixed line on even if I buy a more powerful GPU, I can no longer get more performance. That being said, even in those scenarios, you could still turn up graphic settings if they weren't already maxed out, and that generally doesn't really increase the burden on the CPU, so you could still stay at your CPU's frame rate limit, but just increase the graphic settings, or, have, uh, or increase the resolution on the monitor, that kind of a thing. So there can still kind of be some benefits to that. Now, you don't wanna get a ridiculous pairing where the CPU is just way too weak for the GPU. Generally, you do want to be GPU limited, so we would want a CPU that can keep up here, but as long as we get a CPU that can keep up, we are going to be uh, massively increasing the overall performance in games uh, as we increase the GPU. The CPU is only gonna have a noticeable performance increase if you were running into situations where you were hitting that CPU's maximum frame rate. So here's what, what I mean. So what if we just drop the CPU to something that's still new and still good, but just not the absolute top end thing. Let's say we were sticking with the Ryzen situation. Uh, maybe we drop down to the 9700X. It's not an X3D chip. It's $239. I'm not even trying to say that this is the best value gaming CPU out there. 
I'm just trying to illustrate the point that if we free up some budget here, this is now $239. So we're now spending about 700 instead of about 1,000. Now, if I hadn't already purchased the 5060 Ti, I could now plan, what if I spend this much on my CPU? What kind of GPU can I afford now? Now, if we found a 5070 Ti at MSRP, that would fit. I have a feeling we're not gonna see it. Yeah, unfortunately, the $750 5070 Ti models are generally sold out. Looks like the least expensive right now is $840. Let's slot that in right now to illustrate a point, even though we're slightly over the original budget. We're now at 1,077. So about $100 over budget compared to the, the previous pairing with the 5060 Ti. Um, but again, we're kind of in a similar ballpark. But now here's the thing. You just ask yourself, is the 5070 Ti frequently going to be CPU limited by the 9700X? And the answer is there are often certain spots in certain games or certain games themselves that tend to be more CPU limited. I, I, I don't really play World of Warcraft, but I have a friend that does, and he says it's CPU bottleneck all the time when raiding. <laughs> so, I mean, there are situations where, yeah, this could end up CPU limited, or maybe you're in super dense city environments in certain games, you get kind of CPU limited. But generally, in most situations in most games, the 9700X is not holding back the 5070 Ti. Meaning for a similar, little bit more expensive, but similar price, we're now getting roughly 80% more performance, almost going to be doubling the performance, which can either be almost doubling the frame rate or more likely some combination of a frame rate increase as well as a graphic settings increase. And that is gonna be way more noticeable then any kind of benefit you're getting out of getting that 9800X3D paired with the 5060 Ti. Now, is it gonna be even better to pair the 5070 Ti with the 9800X3D? Yeah, that's gonna be even better. In those situations where you do hit CPU limits, it'll happen at a higher frame rate, so that'll be nice. And also the 9800X3D will age better. Um, uh, maybe be more capable of handling stuff, but. I think I'd have to look it up, but I, I'm fairly certain that the difference in, in gaming performance between the 9700X and the 9800X 3D is only somewhere around 20 or 25% in most situ in most games, sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, I, I, I'd have to double check, but the point is, it's a much more dramatic increase in your gaming performance by increasing the GPU here than the CPU. In fact, I really think if we wanted to get closer to our budget, we could drop down to a $200 CPU that's like a six core. We're staying at an eight core here, uh, again, because it's just kind of illustrating a point. But the next thing I wanna get into is this idea of this kind of future-proofing idea. Future-proofing the platform uh, for five to six years by getting that 9800X 3D. Again, I do wanna emphasize the fact that it's not actually a mind-blowing performance uplift between the 9800X 3D and the 9700X. It is noticeably faster, but in many situations, like I said, I think 20%-ish I think or so. Uh, so it's not like you're getting some doubling the performance of the CPU by spending literally more than double the price on it. It's not scaling like that. Whereas the GPUs are more able to scale like that yeah, by, by spending less than twice as much on the GPU, we are getting almost twice the performance. It's a much more linear scale here. So I think you're getting more longevity out of the GPU upgrade than the CPU upgrade. Again, as long as you stick to a reasonably modern CPU. But also, you can kind of get into a trap trying to overdo the future-proofing of a PC build. In the end, no PC is completely future-proof. It will eventually be obsolete for modern games. Now, honestly, PCs have been hanging in there better than they used to. I, I think um, it used to be the case that within a year or two, it, was, it could be rough to play some of the biggest new AAA games at all. At all. Um, um, but uh, it's actually, uh, you can future-proof for a while, right? Like for example, I think buying a 16 gigabyte GPU compared to an eight gigabyte GPU gets you some reasonable future-proofing because honestly, it's not even future-proofing, it's present-proofing. There are already games that are having issues at eight gigabytes, right? And we'll be getting into the next console generation and all of that. 
um, where more VRAM usage will probably go up. But in general, you can't overdo the future proofing. So it's better to focus on what is going to get you massively increased performance right now. We're talking 80% per better performance immediately noticeable now compared with maybe 20% better on the CPU if we start getting into CPU limited situations in the future after we've upgraded the GPU if we don't also end up upgrading the CPU at the same time. Do you see what I'm saying here, right? This kind of thinking is thinking, well, five to six years from now, I might want to upgrade my GPU because I've only got a 5060 Ti, but if I had a super powerful CPU, I might not need to upgrade that at the same time. But realistically, five to six years from now, your financial situation could be completely different. The PC market could be completely different. There could have been a breakthrough in CPUs where even a budget CPU at the time just demolishes a 9800X 3D. That's not wild to believe could be possible in five or six years. Um, so what I'm getting at here is, well, having at least a tiny bit of thought to something that's gonna at least be okay for the next few years, more thought should be put into what's gonna be noticeably better now. Because this pairing is noticeably better right now, as opposed to potentially maybe being better after a GPU upgrade shows the CPU difference if I even end up upgrading my, my GPU, if I'm even still PC gaming at the time, uh, depending on what parts and prices look like in the future, do you see what I'm saying here, right? Anyway, so if you're taking something away from this video, uh, I would say I recommend thinking about the total budget of your system together. There's a fixed sum. So any additional expense on one part is a reduction of how much you can spend on another. And in general, it's better to spend more on the GPU than the CPU. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want a terrible CPU. But any reasonable modern CPU is not going to be some kind of massive bottleneck on, on most GPUs unless you're getting to the absolute extreme range of things uh, with your like 90 class cards. Um, so, so this is going to be the better way to think about it, right? Think about those pairings. Think about how you can max out your budget at the time. And while thinking about the future is a reasonable thing to do, it's best to focus on what gets me the best performance now. This is dramatically better than going the other way around on this thing. And I'm a little disappointed with the, yeah, that's a smart move. Uh, just because, well, I mean, I guess they've already got the 5060 Ti. <laughs> uh, but like I said, the whole thing should have been, if you're in your planning phase, plan, then purchase. <laughs> uh, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.